I'll make a quick introduction. <clears throat> My left, your right, on the end is Luke Little, who are an auditor right in Iron Club. Uh, next to me on my left is Commissioner Daryl Wood. My uh, right is Mike Blake, I'm the chair of the Iron County Commission. To my right is Bob Cousins, Iron County Commissioner, and our county clerk, uh, John Blake. <laughs> John Blake. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get it out or not, but come on, boys. <laughs> Okay, so uh, first of all tonight, um, if, for anyone that wants, uh, wants to make any comment, there is a laptop in the back. We ask that you go, uh, if you haven't already, uh, sign into that laptop for comment. That's, we're going to uh, pull from that list to hear public comment tonight, so that we're a little bit more organized. Um, and that's just back there by the back door. Um, I'm going to start out tonight basically by reading, uh, oh, basically just, an, just a statement that we are uh, required to read by law. Uh, it will hopefully explain a few things, has some details in it. Uh, following that, we'll open uh, the the mic for some public comment. Um, I'll kind of explain the rules for that when we get to that point. Uh, and then we will answer questions. Uh, tonight, we're not taking any action on this. This is simply a public hearing. Um, the, uh, we'll we'll uh, finish up the process, and this will be uh, an action item on a regular uh, November 25th. So, 
Number one, the Iron County is intended to increase the general fund property tax rate. The dollar amount of the increase per year, or excuse me, per year will be $1.2 million. The purpose of the proposed increase is due to the growing community and the need to enhance and expand essential services that support the safety, well-being, and quality of life for all residents. First, with our population steadily increasing, there is a greater demand for public service, including law enforcement and legal services. Second, inflation has significantly impacted operational costs across the board, from personnel to equipment and insurance. The last time Iron County did a tax increase in the general fund was in 2003. In order to maintain and improve the quality of services we provide, it is necessary to adjust this funding source. The approximate percentage of increase on the Iron County General Fund tax rate is estimated to be 19.5%. This is only on the county portion of property tax. In relation to property taxes as a whole, this is about two, this is about a 2% increase. The tax on a personal residence valued at $418,000, which is the, the county average, that's the median house price in Iron County, would increase by $35.60 per year, or $2.97 per month. So, uh, we'll open for further comments. Okay, the first on the list is Michael Clark. Come on down. Thank you. 
you're going to have trouble through dating, but you know, people here in this city do know us. So I think that's what they're thinking about that. But the truth is, I don't tell you this. I don't tell you this yet. But at the same time, we can all say really loud about those two things. Who's job is awesome. Then we've got the, the sales tax increase. It's only been like six months, and then we're back to work. Thank you. I'm going to ask everybody to hold their applause, both the, on, on either side. Oh, listen to me. This is, we, I, I forgot. All right, so, next, but I, I told you that I would read, that I would that I'd lay out the ground rules, and I forgot. Each speaker is limited to two minutes. Please don't repeat what others have said. Please hold your applause on both sides until the end of public comments. Uh, what is to be said is to be directed to the commission without attacks on other people's character. Those are the general rules that we have for all of our public hearings, and those are the rules that I'm going to ask you to follow tonight. So, moving on to the Solomons. The Solomons. Yes, but we're going to, so you can ask, are we going to hold the questions or just answer each one? Will it be the table? No, we'll do our best to answer questions. I'm just going to hold this for 10 minutes. No, I do not. No, we'll learn. Sometimes we, sometimes we write down questions and hold them until we get to answer them. But we'll do our best to answer questions as we go. Uh, yes. Also, as we were mentioning, Tracy talked before this, which we have to do. We were talking to the Tracy. I saw her in my life being a cop, a senior coordinator, a property owner, and stuff like that. Um, but I guess one of my questions was I'm interested in trying to keep up with the financial. Yeah, so in government, we're only allowed to have so much money in savings that we can't raise taxes, so we have so much money within the minimum limit we can have. We have to stay within that limit, but we do have a good fund balance every year, so we have enough savings and enough money to be able to have good, have money for that. Um, but yeah, we try to about raise even every year. We'll have an increase in every year depending on sales tax. But we try to stay within that range and not go too high above or too low. So you raise even every year? Pretty close, yeah. Some years we'll we'll use some of our savings and some years we'll add to that savings. We also have a capital projects fund where we put the money aside for the big projects that come up. Say one of the buildings needs to be remodeled. And we'll have some money for that set aside. And I guess I'll well, on the same thing. So I knew that I didn't hear that you mentioned that like the same thing as well as the farmers kind of mentioned in there, like the laws and everything and you had a hunter and a campsite and all that, but uh, and then there's the non pastoral center and the church and all that. And like I didn't I mean I know that there's different things and but we have Okay, that was taking us a month, and I think that there was a lot of people that were spending a lot of extra time because they were recruiting and taking time to kind of get all the bills up. But you know, the problem is on the bills up, and it's not feasible. It's the goal to pass this out of our office, and is that good for the government? 
No, absolutely not. And, 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 there, and there are, well, there, sure, there, there are programs uh, through our honors office, treasurer's office, in Oklahoma for families who waive their, their property tax payments. There are programs uh, to help that, to help in, uh, that are already in place. Why is it there? We do everything we can in those for those cases. There are abatement programs that are in place that have been in place forever. I'm in and talk to the The auditor's office is well versed in, in helping people mitigate those problems. So, uh, right now, More than tax payments. Sometimes they fix it, not fixing the problem.
the increase of fuel and so on and so forth. He died of illness. That's probably why the schemes would have retired a reasonable amount of time. So our finances are nowhere near the simple $35. I, I, I'm confused. I spent a lot of years in the military, serving this country, and all of a sudden, the time I lived is stabbing me in the back. And it hurts like a pain. I think it's time. Thank you. Um, the, the question that I don't understand is that you, you've indicated that you think this is some kind of uh, inflation and also growth in the, the city. <laughs> but that all still seems to depict them as the city of percentage. Because you have a percentage rate, and I was looking at my own property tax and went back through my records, and when I built the house on the property, the tax tripled. So that was a change from two hundred, about two times as much as the rate of other residents here. And then inflation, you automatically get an inflationary increase because property values keep going up. So, so first of all, Iron County collects the taxes, but we only our portion of property taxes is about ten percent. The rest goes to the school districts, your city municipalities, water concerns. So the way that it works is Iron County is allotted a certain amount of money through taxes. So as property values go up, tax rates actually decrease. So even though the property value or anything else goes up. The amount that the county takes in is the same. So the property value. Do you have a percentage for that? No. If, if everything is static. If everything is static. So yeah. it's, it's, I mean, it's wrong. It's, it's, but, it's, but basically, as, as, as housing, as value of housing go up, which is the exponential period, property tax rates actually decrease. Which keeps us the same amount of money coming into Iron County. When when those property values go up, we don't get more money. The only money that we get that comes in is on new growth. And just for for instance, our re our revenue increase in new growth this year is about two hundred thousand dollars. New growth in, that we that we get as the county. Um, so. The, and what are the that's, I mean, that covers roads, that covers law enforcement, that covers council on aging, fire, fire uh, and, and everything. So, I mean, that, for that new growth, the, the, we get that $200,000. So just put that in perspective, uh, that would only hire one and a half police officers. Um, that wouldn't buy a new piece of equipment or What's that? They aren't anymore. They aren't anymore. It's, I mean, it's just. I, I don't understand that. You're still talking about the rate increase. The rate doesn't change. The change is that. It goes down, right? So I actually have, I think. So I actually have, at the end of this, I, I figured there would be questions on this. I actually have a few slides to go through after this to show the history of the tax rate and then what happens when values change and how that affects taxes. So I have that all. Okay, the next speaker is Mrs. English. Thank you. 
why not teach new people with new constructions to try to teach them? Oh, I Why aren't they just charged up front a high portion to help them to cover what they want and to get rid of these that are increasing the needs for this community? And I think they should have a larger um, responsibility in, in providing for people to prove what they're going to get. I mean, these are well, most of the senior citizens, most of the entire kids, a lot of the residential parents were taking care of having to take care of the kids. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we, we can't charge a higher tax rate for certain people or certain buildings. But when they do build a new building, that is when you do get the new growth property tax that Mike was referring to. So, like he said, this year, our new growth was $145,000 in our general fund from new properties being built. And so they'll start paying property taxes, but you can't charge them extra in the first year. They said they pay the same property tax rate as everyone else, every I'm property. Charging them a higher tax rate. Charging them a, a, a real commission. So, so uh, there is a version of that that's to call it impact fees. Um, there are some pretty strict rules about how impact fees will be, and the county really doesn't pay impact fee monies unless it's in an unincorporated area. But that, that does kind of call along what you're saying. Um, that happens in, in, in the cities and also in the unincorporated areas. Uh, but then the other end uh, is that we have to be that good with how we uh, value these tax real property. That makes sense. I think we can't be like, well, you you only been here for four years, you need to pay more. I mean, that's well, maybe this yeah. is the right place to address it. But when people buy a building permits and the people, the builders and determine the price of the the home to themselves, condominiums, I I just think our elected officials should figure out a way where people who are relocating responsible for contributing to the services that need to be added for their needs. And make sure they get, and if I can, so uh, <clears throat> you bring up a good point with uh, building permits. So we do have building permit fees. I mean, there there are the, I mean, we can't charge an initial, like, moving in, moving in tax, but there are building permit fees, uh, those type of things, and that really does help offset that does bring revenue into the county so that we're not so reliant on just property tax. Property tax is one revenue stream, but we do get we do get revenue from building permits. Um, if we didn't, we would we wouldn't be able to function at all. Um, so there are so many different funds and there's there's certain parameters on different funds of where that money can be spent. Um, for instance, you know, there's a certain pot of money that can only be spent on public safety, whether it be fire or police. Um, there's a certain percentage of money that can only be spent for assessing and collecting judgments. And that. We do bring in fees. We bring in recording fees. We bring in uh, building permit fees. Uh, without those things, we wouldn't be able to function. So the you know, the, the increase to property tax is is specific. And, and I'll tell you where that money is going to go. Um, specifically, it's going to go uh, so that we can give our employees, that we can continue to pay our employees and continue to offer them health insurance. That's where this increase is going. The increase is solely going. We're, we're looking at a very small cost of living uh, increase for our employees this year that's a uh, numerous percentage point below the national average for cost of living, but it's what we can afford. Um, 
our employees are citizens as well. Right? And with that, with them, the county doesn't run, and if we don't pay them a living wage, then we're not going to And that's my point I'm trying to make is the cost of living in Cedar City is much lower than it is in California or in Washington, all these other uh, large state communities. And people have a lot of money and they want to relocate here, and it's increasing the cost of living for people who already live here. Is there not a no way we can require them to contribute? I mean, uh, legally, we can't do that. They don't know what the builder has. If you kind of get me, now you have 400 more people in the city and you just they're paying the same property tax. They're adding exponentially to the demand upon the services and infrastructure here. And, and you got, you know, that was some kind of controlled growth. And I mean, I, there's got to be some kind of equitable way to take care of the people who are farthest community. My family land ownership goes back to 1971. And, um, you know, value of property bonds only started increasing recently and exponentially. I mean, it's, so that's one of my fears, you know, it's crazy. So, and you've been here. Just, you know what, we've, I've been in the commission coming up on the eight, <clears throat> eight years. We've never discussed a property tax increase, honestly, until last year. We've cut and cut and scrimped for the, you know, 2003, it's been 21 years since, since there was an increase to this pond. Uh, the only reason we're here tonight is because we're over a barrel, but there is no more to come. With the growth of with the, the growth of the county, with our responsibility as government to provide, to provide services, we're we're stretched. Um, there there is nowhere else to come. So each of us commissioners have a different duties in the county. Uh, we take on different departments. Just for instance, one of my assignments is the public defenders in the county, both the county board and attorneys, they get arrested. Um, we provide legal counsel to them. And uh, just 
just just one example, but uh, they are so busy that one of the judges will say, "Well, you need to get that more help, or else, and you need to hire another public defender for these people." And uh, attorneys, you know, we we I think I think we pay them about nineteen or about what is it? We pay ninety three ninety three thousand dollars a year. They're allowed to you know do some side work too to augment that because their attorneys may have a lot of debt, but. Uh, that's just one example is is with our county growing we, we have we can continue to have expenses um, with inflation our, our gravel is going over price our oil is going over price our gas is going over price i've ran a business i've had a business for 32 years both of my sons are here i still have them we've been going about 38 years and and uh, it's interesting we had a contractor call the other day and said hey you don't have a person here you did you did some work in our house and uh, I went back to the records, and the bid on the bid on the cabinets was at almost thirty-one thousand five hundred dollars. <laughs> My son just looked up the bid; exactly the same material, exactly the same everything. It was fifty fifty-five thousand dollars. And so, in the business, when we have laboring people, and we and we have excellent employees, and we we have raised their wages for them. We've had to. And uh, and when we have a good business. Increased labor and materials, you have to raise the price. We're in the county's business, in our business. I suppose, I mean, this gentleman asked what we could do different. I guess we could close the landfill three, three days a week and now pick up trash cans. And I guess we could try some of those things. But, but I think Mosdell and I think uh, Rocky Ridge, I think some of these companies that depend on that as their livelihood would probably, have, would probably be rueful than having something to say about that. So, um, to buy a road bigger in our in our land in our uh, road department is twice as much as it does here. Twice as much. So, um, when I was I was getting a haircut um, a while back, and I used this of course just to make sure this analogy. But I asked my barber, I said, "How much for haircuts twenty two years ago?" He said they were like five or six dollars. So last time I was the barber, but the haircut was twenty five. Well, running the county is five dollar haircuts. We can't do anything. And and I would welcome anybody in this room. Uh, Mike and I, Mike and I's terms will be up in two years. I may run the other day off. I don't know what Mike's going to do. None of my business. But any of you guys in this room are more than welcome to file and run as a county commissioner. There are any one of you folks can do that. Because I'm telling you right now, it's not hard. This is this is the worst part of the job. I've. Uh, I've been in public service for 14 years, and uh, until we started talking about a jail that we've been running for, for many years, um, we, we never, I've never been called to public service. I don't know why I like this county here. But, but what, what do we do? Andy and I get online here. We, we have employees. We have employees in this room. That's my network or two. What are they supposed to do? Do not give them rights? We have, we have the state of Utah. Um, they came out and gave. We struggled to, there was a while there, it, it's, it's a little better now, but there was a time that we really struggled with keeping sheriff deputies hired. And, and we would still struggle with uh, um, our jail, the staff to run our jail. And we're down five employees right now. And, and because we're down five employees, we have to find other employees who will fill those shifts and pay them overtime. And, and so, it was two years ago, I think the state of Utah raised the highway patrol's rate of pay by $8 an hour. What do you think happened when, that, when they did that? Every one of our, every one of our deputies in, 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 in Iron, Washington County, they want to be highway patrol. They're making eight bucks an hour more. What do we do? Washington County is also willing for that same wage, so we have lost quite a few of our people to them. So we're competing with all of these inflationary factors we don't know what to do i mean we just don't know we um we we still have to get up every morning plow roads in this place um we have to chip seal every road every road in this town that has to be chip sealed every seven years so you, and you guys I, i'm sure a lot of you don't know what that is some may not but you put you put an oil a layer of oil down you put chips down you put another layer work and that that saves the roads from wearing out. If you don't do that, the roads are going to fall apart, and it's extremely expensive to replace those roads. And so, 
and those chips are twice the cost that they used to be, the oil is twice the cost, or more, the labor is twice the cost. And so, so we have the same 20 guys, and now we have all these other new subdivisions. So we have the same 20 guys now that we had 20 years ago. So we're running the county, we're still running the county on five oil aircrafts. So I, I'm open for suggestions. I don't know what to do. I, I mean, what what, no place what uh, services would you be willing to cut as, as residents? Well, do I need to do that? Do I need to do that? That's it. That's it. We don't do that kind of stuff. That's secrecy. And I apologize. We, we took over the fairgrounds. And at that house, the event held because they rent that that. So Carolyn was just going to close it up because they didn't want to, to put the money for for it. And it was kind of an odd situation because the fairgrounds was um, Carolyn, it was the city, and then the county, of course, had the had the fair. It's the county fair, and and I think it's important for the county to have a fair to come together. We could eliminate that. Um, we took that over and it, it has been more money um, to run the fairgrounds because we're paying all the expenses. But we went in and cleaned it up and, and uh, my husband and I and some others um, helped do those fences for free. We, every stick of that was donated because I knew we didn't have the money to do that. So all that, those fences and all the wheels and all of that were donated. Frank Nichols donated all of that. And we welded for a month straight and then put all of that up. The road department did come in and help us put those big overhead things up to match it with us. But I just think it's really important to have a fair. But if we can't afford to, we won't. I think I think you're probably talking about the planning or so it's just been willy nilly put together when when Carolyn didn't have the monies to, to do that and so it, it's just been kind of thrown together. So so we felt like it was really important before we did any more uh, projects on that or anything to because there is monies we have spent you know monies for from the tourism dollars that we can spend on that not out of the general fund tourism dollars that we have spent on that 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 we've been able to do some improvements and um, so so that you know that's been a really good thing but but we felt like that we needed to back up and plan what what it's going to actually look like because we've never done that and so the county is going to do put out an RFP to be able to plan what a master plan on the fairgrounds what it will look like not not in the next few years unless we have a big boom which I you know I would love that but it's been really a fun project to, to work on that but we like I said, we've never used the general, you know, funds on that. A couple other things that I'd like to mention. Uh, <coughs> I was elected this year, and I've been in construction all my life. And uh, we, did, we did get some public money from the local, a lot of different county and local stuff. I mean, um, our senior center was because of the, a lot of growth in our county was really overcrowded. It was about 5,000 feet. And, uh, and the time that they went to get with the local contractors, we did an RFP for that project. The local contractors ordered that work to be built. We doubled the size of our senior center for the seniors to go and, and, and associate one with another. And we paid for that with the proposal for us to do the public dollar on that. And I remember the tax dollars that we did. And I'm proud of that. Uh, another thing we did when I was first elected, um, we sold Pine County Home for Selling on the corner of Main Street and Fitters Canyon Drive. I'm not sure why we owned it. I'm not sure what they bought. I think it used to be the local. Did it used to be the local Idaho County government? I think it used yeah, to be. Yeah, um, but, but I don't know if Frank Nichols, but anyway.
way, we sold out and like we, we desperately needed more room for our road crews for their shop and some of other equipment. When they have to go down and mill the night and their trucks are full and got ice on the windshields and the batteries are dead and they have to come by your snow, it's nice to have a facility where they can park those trucks inside and it's not so freezing cold. And so we built a new road shed building um, and we built that building for about eight hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. If you built that same building today, it'd be about three million dollars because of inflation. And that was the cost of inflation. And that's how the road, road department for them since that Carol was in because we had twenty workers in the road department to do the work in the county and we really should have put we really should have put a good amount of work together with that same thing. And so those are just some examples of Things we've done. Um, we have been frugal. Uh, you know, I drove. I drove by the heavy equipment. Whatever I can. I, I'm, one of my assignments is when we're flooding in the county. We've had some. Some years we've had these monsoons come through, and they were horrendous. And some years we had. Them. But um, I think in 2019 we had a really bad one. God decided to have six inches of rain on cedar breaks and six inches of drip kick in the same 24-hour period. And I'm sure a lot of you remember that. In, in, the, in about three o'clock in the morning, it, it, the, it was bringing food down that channel that were 30 feet long and this big around, and we had plucked one foot of trees that top of the bridge, and it started sinking the roof, and it overflowed the banks, and it flooded uh, flying, flying out the, the, the subdivision. And we, and, and, and we had cleaned those channels. The channels were clean, and, and we have a department. We have a, we have a full-time operator of the time out we had to replace it in about every five years. And we have him working on it. <laughs> so anyway, we, we have him work full time cleaning channels in our county so that when we don't know when these things are gonna happen. So that when they do happen, we're prepared, okay? But it jumped the bank on that subdivision and deposited uh, in some of those yards it de deposited about four feet of sediment in those yards. And our road crews work for months, they haul up over 3,000 18 wheeler loads a day down there for this part of the county. And we didn't have to, but we did. And we helped them. And so there's there's just lots of there's lots of things, you guys, that we have to pay for in this county. And 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 for those in here that own businesses, you know that you're expensive. Like I, I can't believe you haven't raised rates. I just raised them like two years ago. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Um, Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, but did I hear you correct in saying that Jones is $200,000 for your property? Yes. That's really important. For this year, is all. In the general. Uh, I'm just going to do this. Yes. Now let me. Let's go ahead. Well, I'm just going to say this lady and Mrs. English said that people come from California. I'm from California. I'm a political refugee. I voted for Trump for, for many reasons. Thank you. But, My name is Robert Comstock. I'm in the same boat as a lot of these folks. I'm just at the bottom. My taxes have gone up 30, 40 percent for two years. Two years. And California did want to implement an extra tax, which isn't fair to me because I've spent literally $100,000, at least $100,000 in Rocky Ridge. So I'm supporting the community. And I feel, I feel your pain just like, just like you folks. And honestly, you might not like this, but I don't mind this. What I mind is the $229 we just got charged to the school board a couple months ago. And I thought it was unfair that they had students come up and say, we need a bigger campus. We need a bigger campus. Well, so they're, they're students. They want everything for free. I want freebies too. They don't have a, I don't think they should have a voice because they're not taxpayers. But we're not, we're not I understand, but we collect the taxes and we submit it to them. They get about, like, what is it, about 50% of the tax, we get about 10%. Here's my, here's my point. Here's my point. These folks, all these folks, all these folks here, do you look at your total tax bill? You don't just say, hey, you know, they went up two dollars. No, we look at our total tax bill. And mine's going up two, three hundred dollars a year. Okay, so I've gone from fifteen to close to three thousand dollars. So I'm not far behind you, folks. 
Okay, and people, not everybody from California is down on you guys. I'm retired too, I'm on a crazy little job. And I'm I'm not getting any more unless I, my investments grow, which they're gonna grow with President Trump. Things are gonna get better than President Trump, so we were better off. So I'm not down on this one. I'm just down on the two or three that we've had this year. So Anyhow, we're going to catch up to you. See, in California, we have 2% every six months. I'm telling you right now, I still live in Spencer House in California. It won't be long before my taxes are, will surpass what I was paying in California. Thank you for listening. Thanks, let me. We're going to go, John. Let's get back on track. Speaker, yes. I moved here from California. I came up here ever since 1978. I made the other. And what I see is that so ridiculously expensive that. I came, I did well, for a couple of years I did, the grocery stopped work. I bring in 44400 with my wife, and I'm permanently disabled. I'm 69 years old. My lifespan is very unfortunate because of dementia, and also, I should say, vascular dementia, as well as cirrhosis of the liver, which I inherited, not from the brain. And the amounts I get from Social Security and my retirement, I buy for a discount for the disabled and told by Paragon, I make $400 too much. At one point, I have never had any children. My wife and I work for a couple of children. Never had a single child. And yet, look at the amount that they go through. And I understand it takes a few other money to support all the children. But there's a lot of things. Cut that harm me. Schools want more security. It's not stopping the shootings. What's going on in society? Why would we not look at it? These things didn't happen when I was a kid. Occasionally, somebody would be in the next town and get cut with a knife. That's it. It's people that's allowed to control you. Pull up. You can't reprimand them. You can't touch them verbally or physically. Now the big crowd on TV is put in isolation rooms. What are the schools supposed to do? How do you stop? Where are we failing as a people if we become more and more technically advanced and we're regressing back to the form of the supply method? I don't understand. But I also don't understand why you guys can't see that people are limited income. They're going to be selling their houses. Where are they going to live? Almost. We keep wanting to grow the city. I know we were bringing Graham under the ideology that he was going to uh, grow the city of city with maximum potential. Main Street, we don't have infrastructure. Where's the money going to come from when you need to sanitation? Where's the money going to come from when they need more water? We bought $30 million this last year for Barrow Junction. Aquifer. That water's been gone. Our aquifer was already gone 100 feet a year for the last 30 some odd years. People need to look at me and control our expansion. People want to move here? Well, then we need more jails. We need more police officers. We don't have what we need right now. And you saw the uproar you had about wanting the jail. 
I can roll around with me a phone. I would take him out today if it wasn't for him. When I was at the hospital, he was talking about this meeting tonight. Why was he more well published? If he was more well more well published, the public would have a more convinced that there was a in the city. Well, there was a notice mailed to every property owner with their property tax bill as well. Like the, I think someone had someone had a yellow paper when they brought up the yes, address right there. That was mailed with all property tax bills. Okay. All I can do is waste my time. Are we going to go back and hear the story of who goes to the bathroom because he can't afford to buy a piano tuner? I have to be in my He took a great job in this year to place to live. $14,900. I haven't been to this place. Okay. Doesn't work. I don't think I can't refrain from taking seven four hundred dollars too much. Where am I supposed to turn? I have to get the findings. I can't just ask somebody else to give me. I'm broke. Cole, you guys are asking I think it was what nineteen uh percent increase, wasn't it? Well not ten percent. I'm just trying to and the schools are getting just a massive amount of I understand. But we're failing as a species. So we keep hearing about shootings. Why are we not teaching children? We can't, we can't spank a child. We can't verbally reprimand them. That's what we're failing. Well, I'm sorry for that. I am very much in support of that. I kind of let it go across the block, but you can go faster. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much and thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Okay, and then finally. My, uh, you the, the, school the, school the school got 61 percent of my taxes. My property tax. The school gets 61 percent. Okay. My wife was a school. She was a school teacher for 25 years in California. Our schools, I'm sorry, they're pathetic. Most of the kids are third grade reading level. I'm talking about high schoolers, and there is no discipline. They have what do they have? Coaches. My wife has been taught self defense. Self defense. Not if, but when a student abuses me or attacks me. It's, I'm sorry. <laughs> Schools are failing here in America. Thank you. Um, Mike King. So what is your market value is it? Okay, so your tax increase will be less than what that is. Because that's a, that's on a four hundred and eighteen thousand dollar home. So if your home is valued at less than that, then you can less than what that is. Uh, I just wanted to back up something you said. I'm a retired police sergeant from uh, Las Vegas Metro, and uh, the last few years of my career was spent on background investigation sections where we did background investigations on new hires and assessed and published a tremendous amount of officers from Utah. We know.
thinks or assumes, oh, my value's going way up, I'm paying way more taxes, where's the money going? A lot of people ask that. So if you can go to the next slide. This shows the Iron County, so the general fund tax rate over the last 20 years, so back to 2003. So every year the tax rate will change depending on if values go up or down. If values go up, the tax rate goes down. So if you look at the start, which was 2003, um, the tax rate was coming down and the values were going up. Well, when 2008 hit, when the crash happened, home values went down, right? So that, that increase you can see is right after 2008, you can see the tax rate going back up because values were going down. So, and then it continued. Oh, I got some more slides, so, yeah. So, so the last few years, you can see the tax rate's been going down, down, down. I mean, we're probably at record low tax rates right now because we're at record high values. Clarify the Iron County State. Yeah, this is. So, if the, if there was a tax increase, then the very last dot, like you say, this year with the tax increase, then it would be a little bit higher than what it is. So, go to the next slide. Yes. Yes. And that went up thirty percent between twenty sixteen and last year. The rate. My actual tax. The dollars. Oh, the dollar amounts. Okay. Not the tax rate. Right. Okay. Okay. This this will explain that too. So yeah, the tax rate is going down. So the struggle is it feels just a little bit like moving. But there's, it's like proportional, there's reverse proportional things. So this is a, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, this one, but it is, it is, yeah. Okay, so, the, so this is the first of three slides. So we'll say this is year one. In year one, we have three homes in this town. So one's valued at 100,000, one 110,000, and one 120,000. So the total value is 330,000. And this town needs a thousand dollars to operate. Okay, so to figure the tax rate, you take the thousand dollars that they need divided by the total value in that town, three hundred thirty thousand. So the rate is 0.3 percent. So each home, you take the hundred thousand on the first home times by the tax rate of 0.3. That house is going to pay three hundred three dollars. Next home is going to pay three hundred thirty three. 363 because it's valued at 120,000. And that makes up the total thousand dollars that goes to the city. Okay, now let's go to the next slide. This let's go to year two. In year two, let's say every home went up by five percent, five percent increase. Look at the tax rate. It went down from 0.3 to 0.29. So every home is still paying the same amount of taxes. Same thousand dollars. This town still gets a thousand dollars. And now let's go to year three. Okay, this year values go up again. First two homes go up by five percent. The third home goes up by ten percent. So the tax rate dropped from 0.29 to 0.27. Now the first two homes they're paying less money than they were the first year, the first two years. And the third home is paying more money because it went up by 10%, but the average in increase in that town was about a 7% value increase. So since the first two homes went up by less than the average increase, now they're paying less than they did the year before. The town's still getting the same $1,000. They're just getting more from this home and less from those homes. Okay, so remember that. Any questions right now? Okay. 
on everyone's property in a, I'm going to say, this may not be right, in a different way. But we're saying that two groups of friends are saying the same thing about the So that would be the assessor's office. They're the ones that value all the homes or businesses in the county. Mm -hmm. okay. So they, that change in value, say your home was worth 300000 three years ago, now it's worth 400000 that varies on the market. So they would change that value, the assessor's office, based on that. If we're appreciating every year, um, was there an error and did I overpay last year? Was I overvalued? Oh, no. I am not sure what your value was, but you can check that with the assessor's office. You, okay. So, I mean, your value will change. So, so on your on your home, do you? I mean, it's everyone can contest their value. We send out a notice in July saying your value is three hundred thousand this year. If you think that's too high, you can appeal it. We have a we hire a third party hearing officer that will come in and look at your home, your evidence of why you think it's too high, and then they can lower that value. So that's what you would have had to. So okay. I can speak to that just a little late. Before I was a clerk, I worked in the recorder's office, which person was the assessor's office. The assessor's office has the responsibility to value each property in the year with about 55,000 parcels. I don't know how many structures. When I was there, it was 41,000. Um, but there are, like, when you have your neighbor sell their homes, those get introduced to the MLS, the values get set. And then what mass appraising is different, like when you appraise a house, you figure out what that house is worth, right? How many kitchens, how many whatever. And, um, but then in mass appraising, you have tax, like valuation areas. So like if you live up by the Cedar City Temple, your value is going to go way up, right? But if you live kind of where I live, it hasn't. <laughs> Not quite in downtown, but I mean, kind of my grandpa was born in downtown. But, but, the, but, but those areas, they move. And so there's not enough manpower to appraise every property every year. And the Commissioner Cousin is right. It, it happens about every five years that they revalue each property. But then your property resides in a, in, a, in a taxation area. And so they fluctuate. So that might have been a part of it. And then the explanation, I know that they did kind of change uh, their uh, their approach this year. They've spoken about that in the Commission meeting. They're not here to defend themselves. And that's why I, I can talk about general principles for other strokes. But anyway, so there are taxation areas. So that's an interesting challenge because, yeah, so the answer is maybe. You know, no, well, I know. Well, you know, Commissioner Cousin says something that I think is a student. And that is, you know, you want to move here and then close the door behind you. And we've been seeing this girl for a long time. I've never seen it in high school. Um, and so, you know, my parents bought their home, it was 41000 I bought my first home, and it was 85000 And then I sold it to my tenant, and it paid off both of our houses. I mean, it's just silly. It's, it's like funny money at some point. But, but, but that inflation, like, we have to respect property rights, which means that they can, people can come in if there's money coming from somewhere else, and they can build. And we are affected by increases in values. Yeah, watch your watch your value really close when you get the notice. The short answer is yes. You know, I mean, you you, you want to have you want to make sure that you are valued correctly. And if you feel like you're not, then there is that process that goes equalization. This lady's got to come to the wall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you can see how the change in value, the town is getting the same thousand dollars, but it shifts house to house. 
So every year, the tax rate will change, and the amount you pay to the town is going to change, depending on what your home does versus everyone else's home. Next slide, Jim. Okay, so looking at properties in Iron County, we have all of the homes and commercial businesses that are assessed by the Iron County Assessor's Office. There are also properties like utility companies, the railroad, mines, sand and gravel pits that are assessed by the state, the airlines. So they also all pay property taxes. What's happened over the last couple of years is their values haven't really changed or they've gone down, where our home values have gone way up. So it's kind of hard to see, but looking at the second graph, and this came directly from the state, showing Iron County, the blue portion is residential properties, and the orange portion is personal properties, which is assessed by the, the local assessor's office. So the, the gray and the yellow portions at the top are what are assessed by the state. So in 2014, there's a 12% percent between utility companies and natural resources. So 15%, they were paying 15% of the total taxes in Iron County. Now by 2024, they're only paying 6% of the total taxes in Iron County. So what, what that's causing is a tax shift. So there's not more money coming in from taxes, it's just that their values aren't going up like home values. So homeowners are paying more in taxes and these businesses that used to pay 12, 15% of the total taxes, they're only paying 6% now. So we're paying a lot more, they're paying a lot less. And I thought the value was really good. Yeah, so they essentially assess companies like the railroad, Dominion Energy, Rocky Mountain Power, Union Pacific, all these companies with the state assessment. We don't assess the values. They do. I don't know how to say this nice, but they figured out that they can hire a lot of attorneys and pay them a lot of money to go out to some lobbyists, and they can try to get their values down. And uh, and we have we have one attorney we hired in the county. We pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to fight these big corporations to try to keep their values where they should be. But it's a constant battle, and, and people are losing that battle because it's a tax shift from from like Bruce saying that when they used to pay a lot of tax, now they're not. Yeah. yeah. So, so the president doesn't change. The, 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 the cost goes up because we've got to make up the difference to the fair amount of pain. Well, that's why, I mean, a lot of you said I'm paying three, four, five hundred dollars more than it was three years ago. This is a lot of the reason why. You can go to the next slide. Yeah. Right. Ones that we're referring to that have this, have this to review. Yeah. And I just remind everyone, we would do well to remind our attorneys. Would you come to the microphone? Sorry, I just, I was going to record. Thank you, thank you. No, no, no. We're, we're, we're getting a little out of control. I'm Stephanie Hill, and I just, I, I just wanted to remind everyone there has been this enormous shift of tax burden. But as it's gone from these companies that are publicly traded companies, they're the ones that we have our investment in. So they're feeling a fiduciary responsibility to us. But yet we're all, so we have to decide what we want to do. I mean, it, it seems to me, it's just, it bears repeating that these are publicly traded companies that many of us own that we have any kind of investment. So they are palatable, they do have these lobbyists and these attorneys that are able to sway the legislature. The legislature is keep taxes happening nationally, but these are huge billion dollar companies that we are properly invested in. So it's a fairly complex issue. It's I mean, it, it's it not is. like those are the bad guys, it's like if you're getting dividends or if you're getting any type of payment. Um, if you retire. Well, in fact, the, what's, the, what's the stock index has gone up since Trump um, tremendous. Yeah. You're all up. And it's these same companies who are sticking it to us on the backside. Well, but it's not it's not a simple issue. So 
I, I would just say, I, I don't know, no, I, I'm going to express my opinion. Yeah. This is not, and, and this, this to me is a question, I agree with you, except it's a question of equity, and that's what makes me angry about this on behalf of myself and all taxpayers, in that we have a smaller voice, so I would encourage us to reach out to our, our state legislators, yeah. you know, uh, Senator Vickers, you know, Representative Schiff, Representative Albrecht, and let them know, because what they're, what's happening is they're getting, they're getting you know, pressure from lobbyists that are hired by Union Pacific or you know, Rocky Mountain Power or, or Skywest there, like big companies that, and, and we know it bothers me that we have less of a voice. We, we've talked over blue, we've talked over blue, blue in the face. We, we've met with the legislature many, many times for this very issue. And it's, it's difficult for them too because they, they, you know, they have lobbyists that, that you know, take those values down. It's not good for the residents by any means. But we have tried and tried, haven't we? We've had meeting after meeting with, with our legislators. So, so just to look right here, this shows the real property, which is, you know, homes and businesses here, versus the centrally assessed and the gray, the yellow. If you go back to, say, just 20, 14, we'll go all the way back. Home values were at 2.4 billion, and now they're at 7.5 billion. Utilities were at 384 billion, and now they're at 418 billion. So they've, they've hardly gone up in value. All our homes have gone way up in value, causing that big tax shift. So, you know, everyone's, oh, the school, the county's getting way more money. Well, we're getting way more money from you, but Way less money from them, get the same amount of money. You had a question? That's okay. Oh, one more slide, I believe. This is just another graph kind of showing since 2013. Uh, this is the tax part of the tax shift. Residential homes were 54% of the total taxes. This is statewide. And now, in, this was in 2022, they were paying 67% of the so showing that shift a little more clear. Can we go back to one slide? I don't know if John's head is in the way, but across the bottom. Across the bottom. So in 2023, centrally assessed properties paid uh, $1,670,000 less that year in taxes, just in that one year from the previous year. So that was, was made up by, by homeowners. Yeah, any questions on that? I would just like to tell John, I got it. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Oh, I got there, it. There was a time, um, I, don't, I don't understand it totally, but there was a time when the state imposed, so we have the certified rate of our values go up break goes down like the chart show. But there was a there was a five year period, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a five year period where the state of Utah imposed a I think it was a property tax of some kind. For the was it for the school? I think it's the state assessment like for the state right. school. And they, they they assessed a certain rate and they did not do the centrally assessed. It was fixed for five years. So and I think in those five years when our home values really went up the state didn't do the, the, that. Lower so, the rate. Lower the rate. And so that was part of the increase as well. So you look at the centrally assessed shift and that state, you know, shift, that, that's where a lot of, I think the rates went up, um, you know, but unfortunately. So they, yeah, so they froze their tax rate, was like froze for five years. So the tax rate stayed the same, but values were going way up. So the tax rate should have went down. So, if we're paying the same rate as we did last year, but our values went way up, we're going to pay way more money. So the state can throws that rate for five years. This is a small portion of your taxes, but they did like a lot more money from that. That ended like two years ago. I'm sorry, I have a lot of money. Um, so when you were doing the when we were doing the going through the issues associated with the JO, I really hated. Just very nice on the idea of paying more taxes to the jail. But I liked, I wouldn't like 
but I think it lacks the idea of the sales tax. And the reason I did is because it sh everyone shares that burden. It bothers me that we have more people living in our county. We have people who own homes and people who don't own homes. And yet we are bearing the burden as homeowners and property owners and business owners for everyone. Is there no way to take part of this and allow everyone to bear the burden as opposed to just property owners? Well, with the jail funding, it turned out to be a sales tax increase of right. 0.3 percent. But I know a gentleman right now that is he, he he drives from Vegas. He stops at Home Depot. He buys two to six inch concrete nails, what center blocks, and he's building his cabin in King County, and he's paying for a jail. Okay. Yeah, it's much better that way. Right. So I'm just right. wondering, is there no way for us to allow people who are buying their stuff at Home Depot to help them? Oh, good point. And so we do collect some sales tax. There's a limit, like that rate can't be increased. We do receive some increase in funding for that every year. And that has allowed us not to do a tax increase for 20 years. If with Without the sales tax, we would have to do a tax increase every year for the last 20 years, you know. So that is helping, but with the inflation and our costs going down so much the last couple of years, it's been outpacing that. It, it's been, when we did the jail um, public hearing, it was brutal, but we knew that we, because we sat in meetings and meetings and gone through the and knew that, that our jail was full. And and I wasn't comfortable about letting criminals go back out and, and have another crime. I, I, I don't know who, you know, if others are comfortable with that, but I never have been. During that public hearing, we had a lot of people from California say, oh, well, they increase ours just a little bit each year to keep up with inflation. Well, I know why the commissioners have not done that over the years. It's difficult. It's hard. That's why I didn't run again, to tell you the truth. When I you get as old as I am, and, and you get yelled at that many times, for roads or whatever else, it, it's hard. So, you know, the commissioners over the years, Maybe they were afraid that they wouldn't re get reelected. I, I, you know, and, and that may be the case if they raise taxes. I wasn't worried about that. I knew we needed a jail, and I know that we need to fiscally pay for what we need in our county. And if, and if we get yelled at, that's fine. But we understand because we sat through meeting after meeting after meeting and understand the budget and understand the need for the jail. We, we have the oldest jail that is operating, and, and it, it, was, it was difficult. When I had to re-up more um, county commissioner, it was before we had gone through the legislature and got that sales tax. So it, it, it's a hard job, I'll tell you that. And, and four years of it at my age has been, has been hard. Tax. So to speak. Exactly. But I was willing to do it because I know the needs of the county and I love the county. Well, we, we appreciate your service. I'm, I'm, I, your, your public hearing was kind of developed into a. Yeah, you know, I, I just, okay. I, I just want to just, I yeah. think, I want to make one more point real quick for you then before you go to chair, just to take a question. So when when we as a commission and, and we as a commission I mean I include Luke and John, uh, HR, the department heads and other elected officials, we sat down and crunched numbers um, down to the dollar in every department to determine what our very basic needs were. And what do we need to keep afloat? <clears throat> the, this this isn't building in any patent. It's not building in a slush fund. 
we sat down and figured out, you know, do we do we do a twenty percent tax raise? And we're like, you know what, we could get by with nineteen point five, but we can't get away with nineteen. I mean, we spent hours and hours crunching the numbers to see what our responsibilities are as far as services to the community, and and. 19.5% is what we have to have to continue services to the community. There's, you know, we, we could have said, hey, let's do 40% and then we're good, you know, we're, we're good to go. That, that's not the case. We're 19.5% we're because that's what we need to, to keep our county afloat. Um, we're, if, if you sit through the budget meeting that we have, we literally go line by line of every department in the county, and, the, and it's like, you know what? You guys came in five hundred dollars under budget last year. Let's lower your budget five hundred dollars and try to get our bring went over two hundred dollars. Let's raise your budget three hundred dollars for this year. It's we we really manage it down to the penny. And there you go. I just can't say more. I, I and everything's gone up. So I would never, I would, yeah, to, you know, I would have never considered, it, it wasn't even thought in my mind we'd ever have to raise taxes. This is, I'm going into my eighth year uh, as a commissioner. Until the last two years, this was a boring conversation. It's not a thing that we even had to talk about before. But this year in our budget, you know, we, we've had requests, I think we had over 30, Personnel requests and from different departments that came in says, Look, I've got to have this. And I, I think in the end, we're finding we're going to get a higher rate for five employees, seven employees across the county instead of the 30 that, that really are needed. Uh, and some of those, you know, I would say half of those employees come from. Enterprise funds like the landfill, things like that, the total technical development fund. So we do really, without this, we, we don't operate. This is the very bare bones of what we need to try to pay for. Okay, it is, yeah, we, we've all lost sleep over this. It's not, it's not pleasant at all. This is the very least impact that we can. I'm in the same boat again. Like, yeah, my as commissioners, since you know, we've been able to we've been able to raise wages, we've been able to you know keep our wages competitive. Uh, I don't know the last time that the commission has got a raise. It was prior to my coming into the commission eight years ago. Uh, we as commissioners, as everybody else in the county, you know, we've been able to buy increases. Year to three. And, and every year we talk about it, but it's just, we're, we're not, these retired at my house. This is, you know, up until very recently, this has been my primary source of income. I work two part time jobs on the side to make ends meet. But to keep your taxes down, it's more important to me not to take an increase because the increase to my salary. It affects everybody in the county. I chose this, so I need to live with it. So that's that's my two cents. Do we have any other hand? Do we have a couple more questions? Let's go right here, Madam and Dre. No, oh. come up, come up to the mic so we can hear you. I mean, tell us your name. Need a little bit of background. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know that people are also school bosses. Do you have any general help with with any of the when they say you're a taxable? So remember, we had saved up money, but much of that money, not much, but some of that money was actually covered by the federal money. That was the the capital projects for that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then um, at the behest of the citizens, we actually went to the legislature and developed it. We represented the ship, and Senator Vickers uh, helped shepherd through the um, HB 
Utah State High School mountain bike championships. Uh, we have another regional mountain bike race. Those, those events have actually used over a million dollars into our economy. Uh, rock climbing, all of those things. So, so when we pay, you know, when we upgrade those facilities, you're, you're actually well in the Utah Summer Games or you know, a year ago, we got a new director of the Utah Summer Games, which has nothing to do with the county, but it has phenomenal and great youth events, um, high school events. Yeah, and so, we had to yeah, that's oh, that is that real quick. <laughs> so we're having a meeting next week with the BLM. In fact, I talked to one of the people at another meeting, and and she said there may be uh, funds available that the county and the BLM can go in together because that is a the BLM, the BLM. Yeah. We're gonna we're looking at that. Absolutely. Yeah. And both of those recreation areas are BLM. They're, they're not county, but we but we understand that you yeah, we understand the impact on our roads because of the Something that's, that's really been a problem in the county. Back in the 70s, a lot of developers that would go out in the same direction and they'd take a play and they have it up the roadway. Well, just, just no, 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 no. they take a road better. They'd take a road better and they'd blame the shape brush, they'd sell lots to people, and the developer run off to California with money. Okay? And then everybody, when they started using that road, would complain that the road was horrible. And and they'd say, We want our own fix because it's a county road. No. We have to, we make developers bring roads to the, the road you see in the subdivisions, they have a certain standard. They, they have to over excavate those roads about three feet. They have to bring in a, like a three inch minus gravel. Okay, and let me. Two years ago, the county was the only county that had the right to build the
Let's bring this to 2007. And I can pay in taxes for more than just a How was your developer? Who developed your property? They were exactly where it all was. So that's what I'm saying. Until you guys all get together as neighbors and decide to move those roles the way they should have been done the first time, then then we'll take them over and fix them. And we'll maintain them. But until then, we won't. Because it's not fair to, it's not fair to put that, that burden on everybody in the county that the developer should have done in the first place. Because you paid a lower amount of money for that lot because that was rolls more than all. No, I did not. No. I paid eighty seven thousand dollars for one of the lots. So they're way more than that. With the asphalt roads, they're way more money. But that was back before now we now the county has them do that because it was such a huge problem yeah. all those years ago. And now now when when they do their subdivision, they have to bring those roads up to county standards and then we take those over. Yeah. There's a there's a Senate. Are you on the Senate Water Committee for the Snow Basin District? Yes. So they have a meeting every month. You go to that meeting. You go to that meeting and talk to them about the waters. Right. They're making improvements. Well, all the roads that you come in on, that, the big road that comes in front of Fry Five Town. Yeah, no, the next one, right in front of Fry, yeah. They, they, we chip fill that, the, the county chip fill that. Um, and a few years ago when they put some other improvements in there. And so all of the roads that you come out on are county roads that have been one way in, one way out. The county gives you a lot of services. I mean it doesn't probably feel like it because your road is a very but, but we, we have paid for when you come in and use the swimming pool in here, or um, your kids play baseball in here, the parks if you come in, the library, we, pay, we have paid for the library.
still, I still don't like the guys. Nobody likes them. But I, for one, want to stand up for people like that. And if each one of you makes that, that plain clear thing for service, why don't we do it for you? All you guys really do appreciate listening to all the people that are complaining. He comes and listens to their complaints and listens to what you respond and helps you to understand the tax issues. And that's why we call these two accounts matters. So I just want to say thank you. We appreciate that.
6 o'clock or later. So that's state law. You have to do it in the evening. Um, during, and it can't be during any other public meeting. So like Paragon has meetings on Thursday, Seeger I think on Wednesday, Enoch has on Tuesdays. So we can't do this meeting during those meetings. And it has to be in the evening. So I mean, Fridays and Monday nights, this is kind of our only option. Yeah. <laughs> 